Welcome back to another gear show. I'm Mike and this is part two of what a tactical stagehand wears to work. That's actually a pretty snappy title. I probably should have put that in the first episode. So uh, today we're going to talk about the biggest thing that uh, I have as a, as a stagehand and that's my tool rig. And that's this pig right here. All of my tools that I carry and use on a regular basis, I carry on a tactical tailor split MAV vest. Everything is right here where I need it. It's easy to get on and off. It's pretty good at distributing the weight since I've got the, uh, the extended shoulder harness on it. And because I'm not, you know, I'm not in the military, I don't have to have it in any camo colors. I can have my stuff in Mall Ninja Black and it's freaking awesome because who doesn't want all their stuff to be in Mall Ninja Black? So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over this a uh, little bit at a time. I'm gonna kind of break down how I use everything. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. As I said, this is the Tactical Tailor Split MAV with the extended shoulder harness. Um, links will be in the what's-its. Um, God damn, there I go with the ums again. See, now that my producer has pointed it out, she's like, you, you say um a lot. You, you use too many word fillers. I'm like, God, oh, okay, fine, fine, fine. I'll try to pay attention. Um, Motherfuck. So here we go. Tactical Tailor Split Mav uh, is a split chest rig that I evenly distribute my tools on. Uh, high priority ones. Well, there's no real high priority, low priority. I'm a stage electrician, so generally I use a wrench, a Leatherman, a flashlight. I have a few specialty tools, so we're just going to start with one side, work our way to the other. On the right side, I have a Dirty Rigger Podger. Uh, this is Imperial, so American Trust Bolts. Um, what's it got on it? Three quarters, 15 sixteenths, half, and seven eighths, all in one really snazzy, pushy drive ratchet gimmick. And what I use more often than not is the spud wrench on this to be able to drift truss. Now, uh, when I started this, I was running it in a Maxpedition expendable, extendable baton pouch, and I found that it just wasn't sitting comfortable. So I ditched this. I am now using uh, the pouch that came with my Leatherman with the bottom grommet cut out for the wrench to pass through, and it is perfect. Again, mod your gear as you need to. It's your stuff, it's your tools, use it how you need it. Next up is just a general uh, general purpose pouch from Expedition, uh, the specific size in the what's-its. And in here, I carry a headlamp, battery backup for my phone, because as I said in the last part, I do carry two phones. I also carry uh, my Allen key set, and, uh, God damn it, hearing protection. You know what? If I haven't already, I'm going to put a tally in the bottom. So like every time I um, not counting that one, it'll go up. So we'll see how many ums it is. Uh, Surefire Ear Pro, love this stuff. I've modified it with a bit of Velcro. So when I'm wearing, uh, you know, my hats at work, I have my Ear Pro right there where I can get to it. It's very useful. Uh, I will also, there it is again. I will also have a battery case in here because my headlamp runs off of double A's, but my flashlight runs off of CR123's, so I'll usually have two of each in there. The double A's is not so bad, I can usually steal those from work. Somebody's got them in their work box somewhere. Next up, uh, the most popular tool at the dance. Uh, this is a stage junk ratcheting focus tool. This thing is about to cause some fights because the guy who makes them is sick, so he's not making them ever uh, right now. And they are severely back-ordered everywhere. <laughs> if you're a stagehand and you have one of these and you need to make a mortgage payment, you might want to think about selling it. Um, God damn it. But 
What it does do well is it fits in a HSGI extended pistol magazine taco. I mean, really well. I mean, it is, it's like an extended Glock mag in size, so it just snugs right in there and it holds. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Uh, also, in an HSGI taco, in the standard one, I carry a Leatherman Wave black, and uh, I'm sure you guys have noticed these little doozits. I'll go into that in a minute. Um, but again, just right here, my primary tools are right on center. That way I can grab them if I need them. The Split Mav also has a pocket in the front here, which I can put notes in. I can put, you know, if I've got a plot that I need to reference, I can fold it up and put in there. So it's out of the way, but accessible. Uh, on this shoulder, I do have a knife. Uh, this is just my uh, Gerber, I forget what model it is. Um, the biggest reason I have this one is I found that a seatbelt cutter is pretty good for cutting through tie line. Or if you have a, uh, a cable bundle that's been E-taped, electrical taped, you can just run it down and clip through all of that stuff. I also have a uh, Grimlock up here, and I will go into why shortly. Let me just get that out of the way. Going into my left side, just kind of horseshoeing around. I have this little Velcro pad. This is from... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Who's that from? Special Operations Equipment. Made in the motherfucking USA. That's what their sticker says, or their tag says. It's basically just a wrap-on Velcro pad. I can put morale patches, which I have one or two of. Uh, I can put my ear pro there if I just need it. It's there. Next side over, going back to the tacos. I have a G2 with a Theorem, I believe it's called the Switchback. And I have found, uh, the idea is uh, the Switchback, when you have it, you know, if you're going from, I have a flashlight to now I have to use a pistol, um, you can still maintain a hold on your flashlight. Oddly enough, it kind of works the same way if you need to wrench something down. Plus, it gives you something to bite onto, which is useful. Uh, that goes into another taco with a leash, and I'll go into the leashes in a minute. Maxpedition hook. This is generally where I will hook my gloves. Let me show you that, actually. Maxpedition hook. This is where I will generally just... It's just an HK hook, and I'll hook my gloves onto there. Next extended taco is just a standard 8-inch C-Wrench. Not a Crescent wrench. Crescent is a company. It's a C-Wrench. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Pedantic debate. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Whatever. Um, this side of the map, too, also has basically another map pocket for whatever. And then I have a Millspec Monkey Stealth Admin Pouch. And what I will generally keep in here is I will keep writing utensils or anything specific. Like if I have uh, a sheet of paper with uh, gel numbers on it, I'll keep it in here. That way I know where it is. Inside of here is where I stow uh, my notepad, which if I'm not actively using it, it'll just live in here. If I am actively using it, it'll go into uh, the cargo pocket of my pants. I also carry a spare flashlight. In this case, it is a Streamlight, uh, Streamlight ProTac 1L1AA, which is their dual fuel. It runs on either a AA battery or 123. That's the biggest reason I got this one, and, and this is the biggest reason I use it as a backup light. If I need a backup light, I can get batteries for it at work. So, that's that. Close this up real quick. Oh, uh, one other thing here. Um, I have a uh, Night Eyes Espiner that is heat shrink to one side. And this, as I mentioned in the previous one, is where my hard hat clips, my cover clips. So that is the chest rig in a nutshell. Uh, let's get to this right here. This is my quick disconnect system. I had a coworker thought it was just like a, like a novelty bead or something, but what it is, it's actually 
uh, very similar to a sling quick disconnect for a rifle. A while back, a company called Trayvax, they mostly do wallets now, released this little guy, which is basically a hook and the male end of the QD socket. And they had kits, which were pieces of 550 cord and the, uh, the cups that the socket goes into. So I have retention. Now this is important because I work at height a lot of times. So now if I drop my tools, they don't hurt somebody. They don't fall where I can't reach them. I can be out leaning way the fuck over something, drop my tool and still have it. Now, the only problem is much to the dismay of many people that I've shown this system to, um, this is a little awkward. Normally I actually have a dedicated uh, paracord bracelet that I hook this to, so it's not as awkward, but getting back to it, much to the dismay of a bunch of people, Travax does not make this anymore. So when I bought it, it was one of those things that I had the money to get it. I went ahead and got myself some extras of the little receiver cups because it was basically, you buy this, you get a couple of these, you order a couple of more. So I've got it on my focus tool. I've got it on my uh, Leatherman. So the problem comes that it's a really secure system, but nobody makes it like this anymore. Now, previously I had run uh, an extension system or a leash system with a couple of these, uh, whew, I'm not even sure what they're called, snap hooks, snap links, something like that. I like these because when they're engaged, they're not coming open. The post coming out locks in the swivel so it cannot release. But no matter how much tension is on it, you can pull, release that stud, and it just pops open, which is great. Now, this is all well and good for certain things like, uh, let me pull my flashlight off here. You know, if I'm up at height and I need to use my flashlight, all of my stuff has dummy cord to it. Let me go with this, it's a little thicker dummy cord so you can see what's going on here. I could just leash it on. I would clip this to whatever I've got on my wrist for security. This is why I don't normally tie to this, it's just kind of awkward. And then I have the same, same retention. Now, I like, well, first of all, I like this, but it's a little too long. If I could get something like this about half the length, Armageddon Gear, are you watching? If I could get something like this about half the length, it would be amazing. I'm gonna email them and be like, hey guys, could you? So to that end, I did some snooping and I found a company called Grove Tech. The biggest problem is that when you buy sling adapters, you get this part. Most times the cups or the receivers are designed to be put on webbing. They're designed for flat application or they're built into something like the stock of a rifle. So you don't, you can't extract them. You can find these parts, the, the actual mail in all day long. These were the trick. But Grove Tech, a company that seems to make every other quick disconnect swivel that's out there, makes an anti-turn swivel cup that is designed for like AR stocks to help. Like when you put it on, it's got full rotation. It will, it will spin until the cows come home. Not a problem in general, but if you don't want your rifle bouncing all over the place, Grove Tech sells this standalone piece, and they're about seven dollars a piece. I'll link in the what's it's. Um, it's got a hole that's big enough for 550 cord or sash cord or not sash cord uh, um, tie line. If you're working in the industry. It does come extremely squared off, so you just hit it with a Dremel, which is what I did. But this does not rotate. It is their anti-rotation system, but it works just fine because this swivel is apparently the industry standard for swivels in general. 
So if you want to put something like this together, I would suggest you find something like one of these swivelly doozits, whatever kind of hook system you want, get yourself a handful of these and fabricate the system. When you find something that works and it gets discontinued, that doesn't mean you're SOL. You can fabricate this stuff yourself. You can, you can take a leash like this and make it work. So, okay, this is long as fuck. How do I deal with that? Well, that's getting back to this little guy right there. I can put that on. That gives me a little bit of an extension. And if I drop the tool, it just falls. 99 times out of 100, if I'm working and, I, and I'm needing to leash my tools, I am... I'm usually leaning over something kind of like this. It's not fun, but it is what we do. Uh, let's see. Tools. Let me start putting these back because I'm getting... This is losing control. One of the other things. Um, this is slightly tweaked from how I wore it when I was doing Super Bowl and Honors because I found that at certain positions, especially when I was working up on the upper decks, uh, I would be leaning over something and... If you don't have these tacos tightened way the fuck down, which this one is now being a pig, it has the potential to snag and pull out. To that end, I have incorporated these little guys. The Maxpedition Jewel basically clips onto the molly of the vest and allows me to pass my dummy cord through. So if it does get snagged on something, there's still retention there. I basically put one in between the standard and the extended taco, and so far, no problems. They come in a four pack. They're a little expensive. It's like 12 bucks for four of them. But if it means you don't lose your tools, you don't endanger somebody working below you, it's worth it. Let's see. Some of the other gear that I use. Um, I finally pulled the trigger. And I'm joining the rest of the crew after I started doing this in 17 years, 15, 16, 17, however long it is. A decade and a half. Um, I finally got myself a chalk bag to put just drop random shit in. I was using a dump pouch, but it was just way too rigid. Plus it didn't really move with me the way I needed it to. So I've, I've finally got myself, in this case, it's a black diamond, uh, 20 bucks or 15 bucks or something at my local REI. I mentioned, hi Jane. I mentioned one of the things that I do is a, a lot of working with ropes. I'm either up on a pin rail pulling, you know, weights or cable picks or whatever. Um, or in the case of what we were doing uh, at the stadium, we were pulling lights up onto temporarily installed light bars. So, you know, you've got, you know, a 30, 35 pound light that's got to go up 20 feet that way. So you got a guy down on the ground who will tie it up with, a non-stretching line like this static line like this PMI here um, you would basically have somebody on the upstairs do a wrap around the pipe and just lift that up lean over hook it on the pipe so when I see you know working a lot with ropes and stuff I'm not as much as the riggers where they got to pull up motor points or things like that but again it's a it's a right tool for the right job kind of thing you don't want Hi, Arthur. You don't want a, a rope that's going to let the light instrument bounce, but the flip side of that is you've got this rigid rope that it doesn't play well with bare hands, so you're going to want gloves for that. Gumby. Yeah? Explain the statement of buy once, cry once. Okay, yes. All right, let's talk. You know what? Here, let me, let me give you... Let me... Let me... Where is it? Okay. Okay. 
off the Jane, can I get you to move, buddy? Come on, Jane. Right over here. Jane, Jane. There you go. I'm going to throw a number up at the bottom of the screen. That will entail how much is in this chest rig right now. I don't know what it is. I try not to think about this shit. The reason is, is because I've seen people buy, like, you know, little pouches from Husky or, you know, whatever they find at Walmart, and they cram all of their shit into these pouches and whatnot. And then after a couple of weeks, or maybe if they're lucky, a couple of months, it fails. Their dickies fall apart. Their cheap Walmart shoes, or their nicer Walmart shoes, or their nicer wherever shoes fall apart. It's very simple. Spend the money once. Get the right thing. Get the right thing. Get the right thing. Don't worry about the fucking cost. Buy once. Cry once. I bought this once. The pain of buying it is over. The fact that I know this will last me the rest of my career is a comfort. You know? Buy cheap, buy twice. It just the way it is. My boots, these are about 140. They're not super expensive. They're not Danners. They're not Matterhorns. I've worn down the frickin' sole. Hi, Jane. But I can take these nice, comfy, broken-in leather boots to a cobbler here in town and get new soles put on. In fact, that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to go with something more like a, like a lightweight runner kind of sole. Don't, just because the sole is gone on your boots doesn't mean the boots are garbage. You've broken in this part. This is all super comfy now. If this part's gone, replace this part. It's your gear. Use it however you need to, but my God, get the right stuff. Because if you don't, it's gonna fail you. It's gonna fail you at the worst possible fucking time. The other option aspect of that is if you have to buy it four times over the lifespan of one of your pair of pants. $300 pants plus another 30 for the knee pads. I've been using these as a stagehand two and a half years now. There's no seams coming apart on them. The only problem I have is literally this right here and they've faded out a little bit. You can't, you... You can buy garbage. You can wear jeans to work. You can wear whatever you want. But when it fails you, the only person you've got to blame is yourself. She's absolutely right. I could buy a $50 pair of Dickies. And then in three or four months when I've trashed them, I could buy another one. I could buy another one. I could buy another one. Or I could just save up for a little while, put my pennies away, buy the good stuff. Buy once, cry once. You're going to see what a lot, like in the, in the tactical community, you're going to see a lot of shit on this table that's Gucci gear. I'm not kidding. My work bag is a $500, $400 Eberly stock bag. You know who uses these? Snipers and millionaires. But I don't ever have to buy the thing again. I, I'm, hold on a second, I'm like drowning here. You know? Yeah, yeah, a $10 hard hat would work. Why did I get a $60 bump cover? because I didn't have $300 for the one that I wanted. This will work for now. It's, <sighs> There's a time and a place to go cheap. Okay, seriously. If, if, you know, if you're taking, you know, Randy Marsh out for a fucking wine tasting, go cheap. He won't notice the difference. If you're talking about your career, if you're talking about the shit that you work with every day, Especially in an environment where if you if you don't have the right thing, you can't do your job properly, it's going to affect other people. Just get the right shit. Okay, you know what? Rant over. 
that's my work stuff. The last segment of this is going to be how I carry it all. And then it'll be back to our regularly scheduled stuff. Uh, I know I was supposed to do my get home slash EDC bag. That is going to be in the works. But for now, I'm Mike. This has been another gear show. You know the drill. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Links to everything in the what's it's down below. And just try to be better than you were yesterday. <laughs>